Hey, this is Paul from the Coda community and in this new video I want to do something entirely different. It's not going to be a tutorial, it's going to be a case study of a real piece of work that I did for one of my real clients. Uh, as a disclaimer, I was not paid, uh, well obviously I was paid for the job itself, but I was not paid to promote these guys. I just see it as a win-win for everyone. It's a chance for me to showcase some of the work that I'm doing. It's a shout out to these folks who do a pretty nice business there and a way for everyone to learn, to see what's possible with Coda, how one can approach a rather, um, a rather trivial uh, requirement, how they can solve this challenge with Coda and maybe do some nice user experience along the, along the way. So yeah, without a further ado, here's the company, the client's called uh, Business Design Lab. It's an Indian-based company, basically a bunch of guys doing consulting for startups, ventures, businesses, uh, uh, it's people with some business uh, education, with some background in business. And basically what they do, they you schedule a call with them, you fill out a form, you tell more about your company, your startup, whatever, you schedule a call with them and they uh, try to help you figure out uh, what you can do to improve your business. So like what kind of promotions you may want to run or how you may want to rephrase your value proposition to the world or maybe see a different market somewhere. So yeah, they try to, if you're a startup or if you, even if you're an established venture and you have some goals and you have some challenges, they may help you figure out what you may need to do, simple as that. Uh, and my job was to automate an onboarding flow of a sort. So there is a form that all new clients fill out to tell more about themselves. It's a form built with a paper form. Yeah, they answer a few questions like are they an early stage venture or like they only have an idea but no company yet or do they have a company already or they are a person driving some changes within an established company and then there is a, a branching logic like if they are a startup they are filling one set of questions if they're a company they're filling out another set of questions so the form is has some logic to it so your idea, your ambition questions, uh, uh, issues and constraints and whatnot. So they fill out this form and what used to happen before, a person would sit down, take this uh, Microsoft Word template doc and fill it out by hand. So they would fill it out by hand and then there is going to be some pieces, uh, some uh, spaces where they would keep blank for time being. So like this kind, this piece of information comes from the form, like the value proposition that the company uh, tells about themselves, the one that they filled out in their form. And then in a call, a consultant sits down, talks to the, those guys who filled out the form and perhaps type in some notes or a reframed value proposition statement or type in some observations and so on. But the point is that this was done manually, they had to take these answers manually, type them into the Word document. And there is also another piece that there's some action items for these businesses to do, like some campaigns to carry out, some experiments to run. And uh, Business Design Lab have a pretty extensive library of these um, tactics, cards and whatnot, uh, experiments, but they want to keep it private so and to sell access to the whole, the whole library of things for another premium. And they only need to include for each client, they only need to re include a handful out of these cards and they don't want the client to have access to all the cards. So previously what they did, they just copied the ones uh, they needed for each individual report or deleted the ones that were in that report. Uh, with Coda, they hoped to automate that as well. So what they were looking for in Coda is that some sort of automation where you take the form answers, put it into a Coda doc, 
uh, a person could go through that code doc, enable, disable the cards, delete the information that the client should not see, add the information like the observations and stuff uh, to that report, and ultimately share that doc with the client. And yeah, the client should not have access to the whole library of things. So ideally, the doc should not have a database of all cards or it should be deleted and the client should not be able to access it through document history or whatnot. So yeah, that was the idea. And uh, another thing, another challenge uh, was to integrate forms and Coda, not using Integromat or Zapier, but using another tool, which is pretty similar to Zapier. It's called QuickWork. This requirement was mostly because QuickWork are a strategic partner of Business Design Lab. They are folks of a sort or they were consulting with them or whatnot. But what I found out, it was pretty easy to do this because it's very similar to Zapier and even has some uh, advantages over Zapier. Like here you can type in JavaScript if you need to do some conversions like uh, convert data to JSON. Uh, you can do it right in the field. You don't have to make a separate code block for that. So that's that's a nice thing. Yeah. So yeah, what I did, I created a workflow where when a form is submitted, so there is a template doc in Coda, a template report. It's blank. It's just a, yeah, it's a template doc. When a form is submitted, Quick work automation makes a copy of this template doc and uh, well, names it prepare. We call it a preparation copy and puts it into a new reports folder. So this new reports call. Uh, so this is the doc that a person from Business Design Lab, a consultant. Uh, goes through and sets it up, sets up the report. So this is the template, it gets copied each time a form is submitted. And then a person goes through that copied doc, through that first copy, and when that copy is finished, they click a button. When they, the report is set up, they click a button, and yet another, the third copy is created, and that third copy is the one that uh, is also automatically shared with the end client. Why that third, that like second copy is needed? Because when you copy a doc, a uh, change history is cleared. So this template has all the cards in it. And we don't want to share that library of all cards with the end client. So we make a copy of that last doc with blank changes history so that the client cannot find the whole database that used to be there. But it's easy to just walk you through this. So this is the form. I took the liberty of already filling it out. Quick work already ran on this form and created this copy for Coda tricks. And here's how it looks. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so first the structure of the doc. A pretty standard structure that I do for all of the docs that I'm building from scratch. There is a database section of the doc that has all the internals and I always do this one. It contains all the base tables and all the helper tables and that's what I always do as a matter of principle because I believe that in a doc there should be a dedicated builder's view uh, a, a, a piece of the doc that a doc builder should work with and it, it should be easy to work with when you're developing the doc. So we have some, we have some tables here and these are the tables that are gonna stay in the document after the report is done. And I can tell you, I can go more into details later. And then there's this page with sub pages that is only going to be used temporarily. So during the setup of the report, it has a 
data it has some information about the form itself so there is yet another automation of how we uh, update the doc uh, so when it first when folks change the form like change the questions or change the options there is an easy way to just click one link and then get the new fields into this doc a new set of questions and answers for this doc so that's automated as well reading from paper form itself the form itself how we get that into coda uh, but we don't need this in the end doc it's just there for like for the time of setting up the doc and the important thing what paper what quick work does the when the form is submitted it takes the whole bulk of data of the form instead of trying in like zapier or quick work or whatever mapping each uh, field to a column in a table what i do and i think i already uh, made uh, a community post on that uh, it was about type form zapier to code the alternative way i already published this trick how you so that instead of mapping individual fields you just take the whole bulk of data and insert it as a bulk yeah you insert it as a bulk into coda and you do all the parsing splitting down uh, splitting into individual questions and answers you do it in coda itself why do you do this because it gives you much more flexibility with what you do with these fields and you don't have if you change something you don't have to always go and uh, change the automation uh, when you try editing your automation it means that there's downtime so that forms that are submitted in this time they are not processed like zapier for instance when you try to edit this app it gets disabled for the time being so you don't have that downtime and you're more flexible with how you're parsing this these things so the goal is to get whatever kind of in whatever form to get all the data of your form into coda and then do all the processing in coda itself so that's what i tend to usually do and it proved to work much better than trying to map individual fields all the, uh, every time so yeah what it does it puts a bulk of data from that form into this cell uh, all the tactic cards are coming from a separate doc a private doc of the library is a source of truth doc and it's coming into this doc with using cross docs so we are syncing these cards if there are some changes they go into this template and when you copy the template uh, all the recent cards they appear in this doc as a yeah i just won't show you everything because it's something that's sold separately same with experiment methods same with labs so all the data comes into this doc from a private doc using cross doc and in the template that we are going to share with the end client these must be deleted the client should not have access to these tables anymore and to none of the data from these tables yeah so we get that data in here and after the report is processed they delete this section so yeah how working with the report looks like a person from business design lab when a new form is submitted they get a email notification and they go into this doc so that's what they see like let's say me paul submitted a form for coda tricks the blog that i'm going to start eventually what the person from business design lab sees and needs to do so they open this coda doc the database is obviously hidden and first they press here to populate the report and what this button does it takes the that bulk of data submitted by uh, from paper form and inserts all the data into a big helper table where everything is split down into each answer goes into their own cells and some are getting in here in a formatted way and uh, like this thing for instance it's a template populated with data from the form uh, and then this template is used this formatted template is used to insert the data like in here like my company coda tricks is developing this and this and that so this template here 
is used to populate the data that, that came from the form and insert it in one nice formatted chunk of text into the report itself. So we are doing some nice things in here as well. Um, so yeah, it's a, it tells you now, okay, the report is populated, now delete this button. So a person just goes, deletes extra lines, founder, and by the way, all these fields, they are not formulas, they are all editable so that when a, a consultant from Business Design Lab uh, goes through this report with a client uh, on the call, they can edit any piece of information they wish like maybe change something in the report, maybe they figure out something else during the call. So all of these fields are editable. Um, now, because there are three stages and they have different sets of fields, what I did here, I created three separate, three separate uh, uh, detail views. And you can see that the whole report is, uh, the whole report is detail views. I'll talk about this a bit later, why it's all built as detail views. Uh, so these next three detail views are for, uh, respectively, for the startup stage, for the established venture stage, and for the entrepreneur stage. Uh, why I did it as three separate views? Because the, we need to only keep one and delete the other two. And they are all different. Like, for instance, here, is one set for an early stage there is one set of steps and just one column for steps completed and one set of fields here how many members are there in your team and how many hours per week are you putting in your into your idea and for established venture you see another set of fields like you have a company name url number of employees industries whatnot and two columns for steps completed and sources of investment and for the uh, entrepreneur stage you don't have these check checklists at all so what happens here is that you have these messages telling you that delete this entire view or, or if the the stage is early and not established venture you can go in here change it to early go back to the report and now it tells you it shows you the header in here these three things are formulas and they work like if it's if the stage is early, show the header, otherwise show the uh, warning. And here, if the stage is venture, show the header, otherwise show the warning and the same here. So that's how the report guides you through which views to keep and which views to delete. So yeah, let's say the stage is yeah, actually established venture. So the person sees that, okay, delete this entire view because it's not an early stage, they delete it, they keep the established venture one, and they delete the third one. And in here, again, they can edit everything, they can maybe check more checkboxes in here, and they can also add, like, let's say they, during the call, they figure out that there's yet another source of investment, like, as mafia funded or something else like grandma uh, left a bulk of money after that, <laughs> whatever, you know. So yeah, you also can add items to these checklists in here. Uh, value proposition on the left you have the data that the company submitted about themselves on the right you can type in your comments and you can also make them formatted or edit them in a big cell mode observation you have your regular comments and activity in the bottom and activity is going to be cleared out when you make yet another copy of this doc like right now you see all the activity, it's gonna be cleared out when you make yet another copy of this doc. So yeah, the person goes through this report, business challenge, how might we, you, the person fills that in, fills that in, and then now it's time to select the cards to show to that client. And as I told you, we uh, import all the cards through CrossDoc from a private doc and 
the interface is like that. I cannot show you all the cards because yeah, obviously they want to charge a premium for that, but let's say a person wants to like says that this one and this one are applicable for this business and like this one and this one are applicable for this business. And after you select cards by clicking buttons, select and select, you copy the selected tactic cards into this doc and they are copied actually into this doc, into the database table of this doc, only the four selected cards. And the report prompts you to again copy, now delete this button and the view above. So you delete everything and uh, again this box, this display box has only the cards that are applicable to this client. Yeah, there is just one thing that needs a workaround. For some reason, you need to go and reselect the cover image. Otherwise, it gets reset. The settings get reset. Okay, you continue the execution challenge. You fill that out. You whatever, type in your observation. Yet another thing to do about labs, so you select the labs that are applicable to this client, you select the outcomes, so it's something specific to this report, it calculates the hours required to complete that kind of experiment, and you select also, again, some cards from that library, and you do the same, copy three selected labs, seven experiment methods, delete the view that's based on the cross doc table, delete extra lines, and in this doc, the labs are copied, the labs are copied in here. So yeah, the labs and the cards are copied. You, the, the client only sees the labs and the cards that were selected specifically for them and not the whole library. So yeah, the, the report is completed, the submission ID has to be entered manually for some reason, that's something on QuickWorks site that doesn't populate it in by report prepared by, and after the report is completed, a few final steps, you have to delete this whole section, click the button to make yet another copy, and yeah, you delete everything in here because that's private nothing gets deleted from this report because everything that's everything that's relevant has been co copied into the database section of this doc into the base tables and yeah you click the button to trigger a webhook in quick work and finally in shared reports it created it created a new copy that it automatically shared with the email uh, that was specified in there. It created a copy. If you look into activity, it's blank. There is no activity for this doc. If you look into version history, the version history is blank. And there is nothing in this doc. Uh, except the data that was copied specifically into the report. So no private data, no access to the existing cards, and the whole report is filled out for that person. And the footer, that's an interesting thing. The footer now doesn't say delete this doc. It now just says that the copyrights and whatnot. Um, how that thing is done in here? Um, so when a quick work makes a copy of the template and makes a preparation copy of the doc, in the report data, it also inserts this doc's doc ID. So this piece of the URL, right? It inserts it here. And this formula that shows the footer for the report, if this document's URL ends with this copied ID, with this captured ID, then it shows these instructions. And if it's not, uh, and if it's not matching with that uh, doc ID, it shows the copyright uh, footer. 
So in this specific doc, this doc ID matches with the doc. And when you make yet another copy of the doc in here, in the actual final report, uh, that doc ID stays the one for like, this is the doc ID for the intermediate copy. And this is a totally new doc with a totally different doc ID. So they don't match now. And the formula is resolving not to the final steps template, but to the footer template. So that's one small trick to do here. And finally, one why I chose to use specifically, why I chose to use specifically uh, display views here. So one of the requirements for this report was to be able to export it as a PDF or print it as a yeah, PDF. And what I discovered is that when I do uh, display, uh, when I do detail layouts, it puts, when there is little uh, room in this particular page, it puts a new uh, detail layout on a, on a new page. It doesn't break it down. Like you see, there is a lot of, of uh, blank space here, but it didn't split this up into separate pieces to put something in here and then continue in here. It created a new page for each of the for each of the items in here. Okay, it split down this one. Yeah, unfortunate thing. If it doesn't fit into one page, it splits it down. But the thing is, if you don't use these uh, detail layouts, it would split down. Uh, it would split down much more often. So if I say I use these cards and I just place them, the innovation tactics. Let's say I place the innovation tactics right year after the business challenge let's say i do it like this DB. tactic cards as cards and group them by tactic let's say keep it like that and i try to uh, export that it's gonna put it right below the previous box and and then cut it down into two separate pages but when I include this, and if, if I enclose it into in a detail layout, okay, I miss out on a few on a bit of a doc space on a horizontal doc space. Like here, the cards are wider; here, the cards are narrower. That's the trade-off. But this may with this approach, we make sure that this doesn't happen. Like the card is not split in two unless there's little space and it absolutely must be split into so this box would start this box would start a new page so yeah nice and clean 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 and so on okay this one is split down in two because it's a long it's a long it's a long one Unfortunately, we cannot do anything about that other than maybe tweak margins or whatnot. But yeah, at least we have it nice and clean for the rest of the doc. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you for bearing with me. Sorry, it, it's, it's not edited. I like took this in one, in one continuous go. I hope it showed you some uh, str strategies of how to approach uh, challenges like this one. And yeah, subscribe to Codatrix, contact me if you have a project you'd like me to do, even though I'm pretty overworked lately and I don't really, I'm not really looking for extra clients at the moment, but whatever, maybe you watch this video when I do. And yeah, thank you for bearing with me and have a good one. Cheers.